Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good and staying safe. Welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel and in today's session, we'll be learning about data modeling in MongoDB. I hope my audio is fine and the screen is clearly visible. I see only a few folks have joined the session, so let us just wait for another two minutes so that the rest of the people will also join us. In the meantime guys, I would like to tell you that we have regular updates on multiple languages and technologies on our channel. So if you're a tech geek and love watching tech videos, Consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content. And also hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Well, I see most of you guys have joined the session, so let's get started. Now, in contrast to structured query language or SQL databases, which is a relational database model where the structure of the database and its tables have been defined, MongoDB does not have or require the definition of a database or a table structure. Instead, we use data models in order to store the documents in our database. More on that soon. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the tech content. So moving ahead, let us now first discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is data modeling and then we'll understand why we use data modeling. After that, We'll be going through how data modeling actually works in MongoDB. And next, we'll understand different types of data models in MongoDB. Up next, we'll discuss types of relationships in data models. And then we'll see some methods to create these data models. And finally, we'll understand uh, when to use these data models as per our requirement. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. All right, so what is data modeling in MongoDB? Now basically data modeling is a process of taking unstructured data that is generated from the real world scenario and introducing it to the data server and then structuring it into a logical data model in our database. So it is basically a process of determining how data is stored and what connection exists between various entities in a relationship. Now you don't have to create a schema before inserting data because no SQL is flexible. This is so that MongoDB can support a dynamic database schema that makes it unnecessary to create your schema in advance. Instead, you can now store your information and make changes in accordance with your data. Now consider data modeling in MongoDB as a relationship. Now there is no particular relationship just like uh, SQL where we use. Now MongoDB relationships are the representations of how multiple documents are logically connected to each other in MongoDB. Now, since MongoDB is a document database, any document within the same collection is not mandatory. To have same set of fields or structure, you can store different types in a collections given field and can even add new fields, update fields and delete existing fields as well. Now, for example, consider an online shopping store where we have like thousands of customers arriving daily and purchasing new products from the website. Now we get a lot of unstructured data that is the name of the customer, their details and all which is basically an unstructured data. Now in order to convert into a proper structured data, we need to uh, model them into a particular way which this is where data modeling comes into a picture where we store the data based upon our requirement. Now the main challenge in data modeling is balancing the application needs guys. Now the database engine's performance characteristics and also the data retrieval patterns. Alright, let us now move ahead and understand why we use data modeling. Now data model basically helps us to create a simplified and optimized logical database that eliminates redundancy, reduces storage requirements and enables efficient retrieval from the database. Now data modeling may appear to be a complex process wherein you have to make adjustments to your database unlike SQL where you predefine your schema and create a new table and then store the data. Now while in MongoDB data modeling helps us to analyze and understand what type of data and how much data has to be inserted into a database. Data modeling is necessary foundational work that allows data to be stored more easily in the database and has a positive positive impact on data analytics as well. Now let us understand why exactly we use now data modeling. Now data quality is paramount for any organization and to ensure that we need higher data quality when we are storing unstructured data in large amounts. Now the visual representation of requirements and the business rules enables to anticipate what could lead to a large scale data corruption before it occurs. 
So a data model enables the developers in hindsight to define rules that monitor the data quality and ensuring that there is no possibility of errors. Now it is also important to understand how the data is flowing within the database and the characteristics of that. Creating data models forces the business to define how data is generated and moved across the application. Development and maintenance. Data modeling exposes errors and inconsistencies early in the process, making it, making it easier and less expensive to fix. So in order to maintain a database that is uh, a MongoDB database, which is basically an unstructured one, it is important that we try to develop and maintain it in a regular basis. And finally, performance is another reason why we use data modeling. Now, an organized database is one that is more efficiently operated and data modeling prevents the schema from endless searching and returns results more quickly. Those were some of the reasons uh, on why we use data modeling, guys. All right, let us now move ahead and discuss how data modeling works in MongoDB. Now, unlike SQL databases where you must determine and declare a table schema before inserting data or perform any operations, we need to basically provide a schema for that. Now, MongoDB's collection by default do not require the documents to have the same schema. Now, the documents in a single collection do not need to have the same set of fields and the data type of for a field can differ across documents within a collection. Now, to change the structure of the document in a collection, such as adding a new field or removing the existing field in a document or changing the field values to a new type or update the documents to the new structure. Now, basically, the first step is to basically create and design a schema as per the requirement and the application need by the user. And then we have to combine documents. Now, if there is no scope for multiple documents uh, to store into a single one and ensure that if there is no other need for a single document to store in a multiple document, in such way, we need to understand what is our requirement and combine the documents accordingly so that we can have performance as well as the optimization of the database is also improved. Now, this flexibility facilitates the mapping of documents to an entity or an object. Now, each document can match the data field of a represented ID entity even if the document has substantial variation from other documents in the collection. So this is how basically a data model works wherein you have to choose as per the requirement and understand what type of documents that are being inserted into the database. All right, let us now understand some data models that are used in MongoDB. Now, once you've understood the business requirement and the application on how it should be, as you start modeling your data, you will likely go through various steps of data analysis. Now, each step might produce different types of data models. Therefore, ensuring data models, having the right one can be generally thought of as being one of the main aspect of choosing a data model and they're conceptualized into three categories based on the level of the detail and the specificity. Now, they're classified into three types. The first one is conceptual data model. The conceptual data model explains what the system should contain with regard to and how it is related. This model is usually built with the help of the uh, user and the stakeholders. It represents the application's business logic and is often used as the basis for one or more following model. Next, we have the logical data model. Now, the logical data model will describe how the data will be structured. In this model, the relationship between the entities is established at a high level. You'll also list the attributes for the entities represented in this model. And finally, we have the physical data model, guys. The physical data model represents how the data will be stored in a specific database. Now, in this case, we have MongoDB model where we are using establishing a primary and a secondary relationship between the data in a document that is stored in the database such as MongoDB. You will also establish the data types for each of your fields that are mentioned. This will provide you with your database schema as well. Now, although MongoDB has a flexible schema, you need to uh, data model or schema design. A good data model means that you'll establish a strong foundation for an ever evolving data model. Now, MongoDB supports multiple ways to model relationship between the entities in a data model. Now, the first one is one to one. That is, in this type, one value is associated with only one document. That is, it will have a single relationship between 
the two connected objects or entities in the database. Next, we have one to many. Here, one value can be associated with more than one document or value at the same time. And finally, we have many to many. Now, when two or more entities within a document can have multiple relationship, that is basically is many to many relationship. In this type of model, multiple documents can be associated with each other. So let us now quickly understand with an example. Now consider the example for one to one relationship where I have a student table and contact info table. Now for each student ID, there is a unique details or the contact info. So it is basically pointing one value to another that is student ID, which is one to one relation. And similarly, we have one to many relation wherein we have customer table and orders table. Now, every customer has a different ID and a customer can place multiple orders. So it can generate multiple order IDs. So we have three different IDs like B204, B391, B448. So this is what is one to many, which is basically one entity is being pointed to three other values. I hope you understood one to one and one to many. So if you understood this, let us know in the comment section below what will be a good example of many to many relationship. All right, moving ahead, let us now discuss the types of methods to create the data models. Now, once we are uh, confirmed with what data model we need and the relationship that we have chosen for, uh, for our documents to store the data, we need a, a method that is to create a data model. Now, that is where uh, we have two different data models that stores the data in documents. That is, first one is embedded data model. So, in embedded data model, you can embed data in a single document or structure in MongoDB. It is also referred to as denormalized data model. It leverages the full potential of MongoDB's rich document and it uses a one to one or one to many relationship, guys. Next, we have the reference data model or in other words, it is known as normalized data model. Now, they are used to build one to many as well as many to many relationship models. Now, while working with the embedded document models, there will be times when you have to repeat the data. This is where reference data model comes into picture, which basically tackles the data redundancy. So I know it is a bit of confusing. So let's just understand this with an example here. Now, if you consider uh, the embedded model, uh, if you look at a document which I have taken here, which is the details of a student named Rohan, where we have a collection uh, that is containing a document has Rohan. In this document, we have embedded a document here that is contact details and his grade. So embedding a uh, data model stores relevant details in the same documents or the same database record. This way you can minimize queries and update required to perform common database operation. On the other hand, we have a reference data model or the normalized data model. So if you look at uh, to the reference model example here, we have basically split a single document into three documents. And since contact details and grade have the ID from the document that is of Rohan's, you can call them whenever needed. Now normalized data model splits the data into multiple collections by using references between the newer collections. You can update or change a single document which will update other collections automatically. This is an efficient way of updating data and is mostly used when your data goes through frequent changes. That is if you're working on a data that has to be leveraged or changed on a daily basis, you can consider reference model. That is, which is basically one of the biggest advantages of using normalized data where you have to model large data sets that follow a certain hierarchy and you have to, where you have to represent multiple many to many relationships. So that is where we use uh, embedded model and reference model. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. I hope you understood what is data modeling in MongoDB and what are the different types of data models and the relationships that are used to create a particular data model as per requirement. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. If you did, leave us a like and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.